Today we're going to show you how to make a PDMS microfluidic device. PDMS is a cross-link polymer that is poured over a mold uh, to make channels, microfluidic channels, in your device. This is an example of a final PDMS chip. And this is an example of the laser cut mold that was used to make this chip. You can make molds out of a variety of different materials. As I mentioned, this one was laser cut. You can also 3D print your mold. Or you can use a combination of materials, such as this one, which is a push button device, which is made from laser cut acrylic sheets and double sided stick tape. All right, to get started with making our PDMS based device, um, first we're going to take a, a weigh boat, um, put that on the scale. Um, with the weigh boat on, we're going to uh, tear or you can press zero. Basically, we want to weigh out on the appropriate amount of uh, elastomer or PDMS um, based on the, the weight. And so the ratio that we want to use is a 10 to 1 ratio. So I'm going to start off pouring the, the base, the PDMS base, and I'll pour 30 grams. Uh, when you're pouring this, this, this PDMS base is a very viscous liquid. So you can see it's going to come out kind of more with the consistency of honey. Um, and then as the numbers go up, I'm going to kind of watch it as it gets close to 30 grams. A little bit more. Oop. Now we're going to go a little high, but then what I'm going to do to kind of keep my mess contained and see I'm twisting the bottle um, and I got a little bit of PDMS on the lip that I'll then just wipe off with a chem wipe and dispose of that in the regular trash. Okay, so I was a little bit high um, on the, the amount, but like being a little bit off is okay. So the next one I'm going to do is tear. And then I'm going to take my uh, Curie agent here. And in comparison to the, the base, the PDMS base, uh, the curing agent is uh, less viscous, so it's more the consistency of water. So instead of pouring, I'm actually going to use a transfer pipette. And we want to measure out three grams. Yeah, so that's pretty good. So you can see that went up pretty fast, so we'll go a little bit less on the uh, next amount. Okay, Alright, so a little bit high, but again, that's okay. You're not exactly at 30 and 3. Alright, so then the next step, uh, I'm going to take, we've got our PDMS base and carry agent. So I'm going to take this off the balance and then rigorously mix. All right, now we're going to mix our base and curing agent together. So mix somewhat rigorously, but also um, for at least a minute or two. Um, basically, the goal is to make sure that uh, these two components are mixed very well. Otherwise, we'll have problems uh, later in our manufacturing. Uh, that looks pretty well mixed, so we can stop our mixing. Um, when you're picking up your spatula so you don't drip everywhere, I recommend kind of spinning it around um, and holding it over a chem wipe on your way or some kind of um, disposable items uh, on your way to the trash can. All right, now that we've mixed these two components together, you can see uh, there's a lot of bubbles that form during the mixing process. So what we're going to do next is put this into a vacuum chamber um, and use that suction to help pop and get rid of all of these bubbles. Here's the vacuum chamber we'll be using to degas our PDMS today. So you can see I've put an aluminum foil lining. Um, this is just to contain any mess um, in case your PDMS spills. Uh, so I'm going to put our wafer our boat inside of the uh, chamber close the lid and then we already have our, our vacuum turned on so just make sure you find the right tubing 
So you can turn the vacuums on, uh, find the right tubing and connect it uh, to your vacuum chamber. Um, and then this part, we're going to turn uh, the valve such that we're um, pulling vacuum from only the chamber. And then we let this set for about 10 to 15 minutes until the bubbles are gone. All right, so the next step before we pour our degas PDMS is to actually prepare uh, something to pour it into. So for this type of master mold, which is uh, has a laser cut double-sided tape to form our channel features, I'm going to actually put a piece of aluminum foil that I've molded into the shape of a Petri dish uh, within the dish. Make sure um, there are no tears in the foil around the creases and also um, that the foil is about as flat as you can make it um, in the center of the dish um, to minimize leaks and also minimize PDMS that might run under your master mold. If you're concerned about a non-level surface, you can also tape your mold to the foil, which I won't do this time, but that is an option in later fabrication. So then I've set my mold within the foil. So next we're going to pour our degas PDMS on top. All right, so in order to remove our uh, degas PDMS, uh, I will not just take things apart because that will cause uh, the PDMS to splash. Uh, first what I'll do is I'll actually turn off the vacuum. So that's off. And then the next step, I'm going to close the valve so that way the in between the chamber and the outside is closed off. So now I've, I've changed the valve and then I removed the tubing. And then next what I'll do, go and take off this red cap. Um, that's optional. We could also evacuate through the other hole. And I'll very slowly, very slowly turn this knob to allow air back into our vacuum chamber. All right, and then once it's fully evacuated, you should be able to easily lift off uh, the top of the lid. All right, so now you can see uh, there's still a few air bubbles within the mixture, but this is an acceptable amount. Um, compared to before we put this in the vacuum chamber, there was a lot of air bubbles, so um, we successfully degassed our PDMS. All right, so now that we've degassed our PDMS, we'll take our boat and then our liquid boat and pour it into the features. Um, since we degas it in a separate container from our master, to try to avoid introducing air bubbles, we'll pour slowly and also close to the surface. And I like to just pour over the center of my master mold. Then as an added uh, tip, if you want to get more of the PDMS out of your boat, uh, you can actually take one of these uh, spatulas and, and scoop it out, depending how thick you want your final uh, PDMS device to be. And then last but not least, uh, we'll just put this in the oven uh, between 55 to 65 degrees Celsius for uh, about two hours. Um, if you have a 3D printed bowl, um, check the temperature limits of that 3D printed plastic because you may have to use a lower temperature. Next, we're going to show you how to use plasma to bond this PDMS, uh, already complete PDMS chip to a glass slide. And we'll do that uh, by first cleaning the, the PDMS and the glass, uh, baking the glass for about five minutes at 100 degrees Celsius, and then applying a plasma treatment for 60 seconds bonding the two pieces together and putting them in a 90 degrees Celsius oven. Okay, so to clean the glass slide, I'm going to hold the top of the slide, take a spray bottle of isopropanol, and then just spray both sides of the glass slide. And then to dry it, uh, we can either use uh, compressed air from the hood or uh, we can just wipe it with a chem wipe. Okay. 
So once we have that dry, then I'm going to place it on the hot plate for uh, five to 10 minutes. And the next step is to clean off the PDMS. Uh, so you can see, or yeah, you can see that there are some holes uh, that were punched into the PDMS. So when I clean this, I'm also going to try to squirt some of the isopropanol uh, through uh, these, these punched holes just to clean out any debris. And again, I'll just hold the top part of the device and spray, go and spray both sides. And then what we can do is actually push the nozzle of the squirt bottle up against the device and force fluid through, uh, through the holes, which can be a little bit hard to see at times. Um, that's just to make sure that we get the debris out and that doesn't end up in your micro channel. All right, and then we do not put the PDMS on the hot plate. Instead, we'll blow it off with uh, compressed air. All right, so like I said, we're going to uh, dry the PDMS chips. Uh, you can use compressed air. You can also use nitrogen in the hood, um, depending what your air supply is connected to. I'm going to turn on some nitrogen in this case. And then it's going to blow over uh, the surface of the PDMS until it's dry. Okay, I'm going to turn off the nitrogen. And then what we do next is we check which side has um, the shape embedded in the PDMS, so which side has your microfluidic channels. Um, and then we'll put that feature, what we say is feature side up in a clean petri dish until our glass slide um, is done on the hot plate. Alright, so next we're going to uh, use this plasma wand to bond our PDMS chip to our glass slide. To get started with this process, uh, the first thing we do is take some solvent uh, like isopropanol or ethanol and clean our workstation. Uh, we want to do this on a clean surface. And then uh, the next thing we'll do um, is make sure that all electronic devices and any metal objects are not in your workstation as uh, the, the plasma can interfere with some electronics and also uh, the, the metal um, messes up the, the process. So then what I'm gonna do is take our PDMS, put it on the workstation, also take our glass slide Put that next to our, our microfluidic chip. Um, note that the PDMS chip is feature side up while it's on the surface. And what we'll do is we will treat both sides simultaneously for 60 seconds. Uh, when I use this plasma wand, I'll hold it either you can hold it at an angle or perpendicular, but I will only aim it at uh, the, the chip surfaces. And you'll see that I'll go back and forth um, for a full 60 seconds. I'm going to start a timer, and then turn on the on switch. And if we have the light off, you'd actually see a purplish color uh, coming out of the plasma wand. And I'll just go back and forth over both of these surfaces. Once that's done, turn the plasma one off before setting it on the table and then quickly flip over the PDMS device onto the glass slide. Then apply, uh, depending how big your device is, either use your fingers or in this case, I'm using my whole hand, uh, apply a light but firm pressure for about 20 seconds. And then the next step will be to uh, walk this chip to a 90 degrees Celsius oven for about 10 minutes. Okay. For this next part, I'm going to show you how to um, hole punch inlets and outlets into your PDMS. Um, this is going to be done using a scrap piece of PDMS. So we do this, um, you can use a biopsy punch or in this case we'll use a blunt tip needle. I want to make my holes as straight as possible, so I typically use two hands. And then find my hole, push down all the way through to 
of the cutting mat, twist around, and if there's any tabs sticking off, typically pull that off, and then just pull the needle right back out. And it's difficult to see here, but now we have a hole punched into our PDMS, which uh, is sized based on the size of our needle to be compatible with this orange peak tubing. So I'll show, show how this tubing fits into the hole before I show um, our adapter. So based on the size of our needle, this will actually hold the peak tubing in, uh, in place with a compression fitting. Uh, now on the other end of that, we need to think about how we're going to connect to a syringe. Uh, so this is a, an adapter that interfaces with a Luralox syringe. So we have uh, this, this red piece that actually attaches directly to the syringe. And then it attaches to uh, this tan screw um, underneath in order to make sure everything fits together that we don't get a leak. Uh, there's a a nut and a ferrule that are uh, tightened together using uh, compression uh, fitting. So once those are on, they should not slide slide up and down the tubing. When I'm positioning the green and the silver piece, I like to uh, go inside of this red Luralock adapter and actually poke, you can't see it very well here, but I actually poke it through just a little bit but what you'll notice is there's no tubing coming out of the top of this red adapter. And then once I have this set up, I can connect it to a syringe, put that on my pump, um, and I'm ready to run my experiment.